There's been a lot of talk recently about Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, which is exciting considering these films were a big part of my childhood. Tobey Maguire and Alfred Molina are rumored to be a part of a live-action MCU Spider-Verse film, which is even more likely considering Sam Raimi's directing Doctor Strange, The Multiverse of Madness. So I went back and watched this trilogy and found myself asking a very familiar question. How do the pumpkin bombs work in this trilogy? See, the comic books have tried to answer that question and have even gone to the length of making this diagram, revealing that inside of this explosive you'll find an internal light, contact detonation, a timer alongside with other oddly well thought out features. One of these is a pumpkin bomb. The other is Terry's chocolate orange, which I've never tried by the way, but with commercials like this, Ooh, what a lovely chocolate orange. See it, tap it, unwrap it, 20 segments of orange flavored chocolate. Tastes nice. Picked it myself today. Terry's chocolate orange. I probably stand by my decision. Meet Norman Osborne, the founder and CEO of Oscorps, a company in charge of making weapons and superhuman serums for the US military. So after facing a financial threat, Norman tests out his faulty serum on himself, and instead of becoming Captain America, he becomes, well, the Green Goblin. He then goes out to kill his competition quite literally, including the assassination of a general. Storm and Norman then attacks his board members after getting fired from his own company, Enter the pumpkin bomb. The goblin throws a bunch of explosives, which causes a bunch of chaos. It only seems to work against construction materials. The goblin then throws another pumpkin bomb, but this time it conveniently vaporizes the board members. Hold on Joel, is that a dab I see? That board member had it coming. But I've got one question. How? There's only one button on this grenade, and when you press the green button it glows and beeps. So how does it know when to do this? and when to do this. Anyways, we see the goblin once again, except this time he's in a burning building, which he uses to lure Spider-Man into a surprise attack. He even uses the screaming sound effect in case he needs to make a jump scare on someone, which is strangely well thought out. Green Goblin then gets triggered after hearing Spider-Man's bad pun. It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. So then he activates and tosses a pumpkin bomb at Spider-Man, except this time it explodes into what looks like a snitch that belongs on a Quidditch pitch. One question, what's stopping this bomb from doing this, or even doing this? Storm and Norman and Spider-Man fight once again. This time Peter gets a pumpkin bomb thrown to his head, which does nothing except rip off his mask, but it does a lot of damage to this wall, showing once again that these grenades are meant to bully construction. But this has me once again asking, if you're trying to kill Peter at this point, why not use this bomb? Which now has me asking what stopped this bomb from being this bomb. And I should probably stop saying bomb before the FBI suspects something of me. Anyways, in all seriousness, there seems to be some type of Mjolnir protocol that's been activated which kills or injures someone depending on how worthy they are. Warren and Norman from the grave tells his son Harry to AVENGE ME! Then Harry obeys without question. Then once again we see a wall full of pumpkin bombs with no labels I must add, so there's clearly just one type of pumpkin bomb. Harry eventually gets belted by gamma rays turning into the new goblin. He then attacks Peter in an alleyway tossing a pumpkin bomb at him, which then magically decides to fly through a bunch of metal poles until Peter catches the bomb tossing it back at Harry which then explodes in his face uninjuring him but provides enough of a distraction for Harry to get clotheslined by Webb hitting a bunch of stuff before hitting the floor and ending up with amnesia alongside the crew of this movie who clearly forgot how anything in this world they created works. Peter and Harry get into a simp fight where Harry is defeated yet he yeets a pumpkin bomb at Peter which then magically decides not to fly this time, nor does it vaporize Peter, but it beeps just long enough for Peter to catch it, tossing it back at Harry right before the grenade explodes. Peter later needs Harry's help. I need your help. So he returns to his place. Now I'm not an expert when it comes to surviving a grenade thrown to your face, but I once got a second degree burn after spilling hot chocolate onto my lap in seventh grade. Needless to say, it bothers me that Harry slowly walks past his fireplace, only for him to then do this dramatic turnaround look to the camera. I get this is supposed to be emotional and all, 
but how are you not dead? And for whatever reason, it's taken him like a day to heal. But who knows, maybe these pumpkin bombs have a healing factor to him. So Sandman is also in this movie, in case you don't know, and he's casually trying to kill Spider-Man. Until out of nowhere, our hero, the pumpkin bomb, saves the day, once again bullying construction. Venom is also in this movie, in case you don't know, and he's casually trying to kill Spider-Man. Now Venom's got two weaknesses, loud noises and fire. And after Peter splits up Eddie from the symbiote, he then uses a pumpkin bomb to kill Venom. And Eddie tries to recombine with the symbiote, and well... Now here's my issue. The symbiote crash lands on Earth from outer space. The meteorite causes a crater and a surprisingly silent explosion. Now I know this may be one of those forged by fire, destroyed by fire scenarios, you know, from Lord of the Rings. But why was Venom not destroyed here? Do you mean to tell me that Norman Osborn made a hand grenade that produces more megatons than a meteorite? Also, Eddie's skeleton is completely vaporized here. You can see it for a split second. Now, of course, this is the same effect this bomb had from Spider-Man 1. Now, I know Eddie's a regular human and all, but the idea that a pumpkin does this to Peter and this to Harry, but does this to Eddie and Venom is kind of laughable. Now, listen, I get it. These movies are, well, movies and shouldn't be taken seriously. And as much as I am a fan of this trilogy, the pumpkin bomb's functionality in this series is, well, kind of silly, even for Spider-Man movies. Anyways, that's all for today. I'll be posting more commentary videos in the near future, hopefully. And until then, take care, everyone. Peace.